Welcome to the Ultimate Gaming Realm, and this is your creator, Dixon, logging on. When I was watching the E3 2015, I was blown away by it. The Bethesda Showcase had the most interesting experience of games announced out of all, such as Fallout 4 and the next Doom game. And oh yeah, do they both look fucking badass. And I'm already hyped for them both. Now the E3 Bethesda Showcase this year is what's going to lead me to a celebration for this game review. Let's put the two games together, shall we? In 2004, the Fallout franchise was purchased from Interplay and Bethesda continued with the franchise starting with Fallout 3, which was a huge success after its release in fall of 2008. And not to forget to mention... The spin-off, New Vegas, which was released in 2010. In June of 2009, Bethesda also acquired id Software, the mastermind behind the Doom series, Wolfenstein series, and Quake series. Now I know what you're probably asking. What's the point? Well, since Bethesda now owns both id Software and the Fallout franchise, id Software made a new series called Rage. Not to get confused with the RAGE, which stands for Rockstar Advanced Gaming Engine, which is of course is an engine for Rockstar Games, for the latest Grand Theft Auto series purposes. No, that's a different subject. RAGE is also a post-apocalyptic wasteland adventure game. You see, now you get the picture of why I'm celebrating. From the makers of Doom, with the similar settings of Fallout. You guys get the picture now? Doom and Fallout, id Software, the creators of Doom, and Fallout with the settings in the Wasteland, add them both together. But unlike Fallout, Rage is not an RPG game, even though it has some RPG elements in it, but it's not really an RPG game like Fallout. It's more targeted as a first-person shooter game like other id games, Doom, Wolfenstein, and Quake. But what's even more kick-ass about Rage, unlike Fallout, you can drive or even race in the wasteland, which I find that a kick-ass goal. Rage was originally announced in 2009, and it looked really amazing for the 2009 QuakeCon. And during the end of id Software's partnership with Activision, id was going to have EA publish it. But later in 2009, id Software was acquired by Bethesda, which also picked up a publishing rights for Rage, and no further involvement with EA on this project. Which did cause a few delays. The game was set to release in 2010, but it was released in October of 2011 for PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. Both PC and Xbox 360 physical copies require three DVD dual layer discs. Since Rage used a powerful game engine, and they want to make sure the game runs smooth. So using multiple DVD dual layer discs really does make sense. And of course the PlayStation 3 is a Blu-ray format. In other words, the PlayStation 3 version of Rage runs on one Blu-ray disc. The type of engine they used for Rage was the id Tech 5 engine. And Rage was the first game that utilized this engine. There were other games after that that used the id Tech 5 engine, such as Wolfenstein the New Order, Wolfenstein the Old Blood, and a non id Software game, The Evil Within. And it looks like they recently upgraded the game engine to id Tech 6, and it's going to be first used on the upcoming Doom game, or Doom 4, whatever you want to call it, but for some reason they call it Doom. I'm not sure if they're trying to make it a remake or not, but who knows. The new Doom game looks bloody awesome regardless. Back in 2011, I pre-ordered Rage for the Xbox 360. Since I pre-ordered it, I got the Anarchy Edition, which features bonus DLC codes for Crimson Elite Armor, a double barrel shotgun, Fists of Rage, which are bladed attachments to your fists, and a buggy named Rat Rod. And I believe there was a DLC code for Wasteland Sewer Missions, 
I don't remember because it was a while when I went through the Xbox 360 version of it. And I traded in for credit, so it's been a while for that version. But I recently played through the game for the second time on PC through Steam. Now from what I heard, the PC version of Rage had issues at first, until a few patches came in within the weeks to come. But I played it through recently, and I didn't have any issues, so I'm pretty sure they actually had all the issues fixed. As far as I can tell, that is. The story of Rage is about an art survivor, which is your character by the way, that's been a survivor of an asteroid, 99942 Apophis, that striked Earth in the year 2029. This 99942 Apophis was discovered by NASA in 2004, and it's possible that this Apophis might have a close encounter with Earth in that exact year of 2029. Well, it's true according to NASA, and according to this game, it is true. But in reality, I doubt it. Anyway, in 2029, your character along with other Ark survivors gets put into the stasis inside of the underground shelter called the Ark. Complete and our personnel entering stasis. This is 1134. Signing off. A hundred and six years later, in the year 2135, inside a damaged decaying arc, your arc survivor wakes up from a cryogenic pod, but sadly you're the only survivor from the damaged arc. Turns out that the Eden Project was far from being successful from hope. Anyway, you leave the shelter and go outside, unarmed, not know what's going on, or not know where you're at, then all of a sudden, you get attacked by a few bandits. Then a wasteland settler by the name of Dan Hager comes to your aid, and wastes the bandits and gives you a ride in his vehicle. While transporting you to a safe town, Hager informs you about what you are and what the purpose of your character like explaining how important you are. Hager also explains about a ruthless faction called the Authority, whom refers to themselves as the true government of the wasteland. But I refer to them as total hypocritical douchebags. Anyway, Hager explains that an Ark survivor such as yourself can be worth a lot to the Authority. But the townspeople also think you're a character who is also humanity's best hope. But one thing about the authority is that they will know that an Ark survivor escaped from the pod. And no matter what it takes, those assholes will look everywhere for him. Especially towns that he's been suspectedly hanging around. So usually when the time comes when you have to move because the authority is on your ass, so you had to go to another town before they find you. But luckily one thing is that the dumbass authority doesn't even recognize you. Every time when you walk by an authority member in the town, they just think you're just another one of these townspeople. So that's one smart thing. And one other thing. Dan Hager is voiced by John Good Goodman. One. We're all a little safer because of that. You got our thanks and that suit of armor I promised. But as you can see. Now the gameplay is like other id Software games. The game is a first person shooter, and unlike the other id Software games which are level to level type, Rage is more like a sandbox free roaming style type of game like Fallout. Except the landscape in the wasteland of Rage is nowhere near as big as the landscape in the wasteland of Fallout. But the first person shooter style for Rage feels like Bioshock. Because like Bioshock for all weapons, you have a choice to choose which type of ammo you want to use. Some are powerful than the others. And there's other similar references to Bioshock. 
like when you loot the bodies or other areas for ammo, money, or etc. It's kind of the same pattern. And you can also make your own ammo when you get the schematics for that type of ammo. And all you need from there is the parts to make the ammo or a projectile. Yep, Rage also has references from Bioshock when it comes to first person shooters. Again, which is fucking awesome. I need to get back into the Bioshock series eventually. And besides Rage being a first person shooter, it can also be a third person driving and car combat game. And the driving mechanics in Rage is pretty smooth. It's quite fun cruising the wasteland burnout style. And the car combat's pretty badass. It's like twisting metal in some sort of way. Plus you can also upgrade your vehicles and get a more advanced one later on. Because the wasteland will get much more tougher, baby. There's also race courses to earn flag points for completing a race with your vehicle. And money is out of the question when it comes to vehicle upgrades. Because it only requires flags, which the only way how you can get flags is completing a race. Which are also considered as special tokens these flags are. And of course the only way how money can be acceptable on a vehicle is if you're purchasing ammo or projectiles like turrets, shield, and landmines. Well, I guess that's cool with me. So far I can say the gameplay mechanics and graphics for Rage are way better than Gearbox's Borderlands. Now Borderlands is still a good game, except that one can get really boring and repetitive after a while. Like Rage, Borderlands is a first person shooter Wasteland sandbox game. Well except Wasteland's much bigger, with more of a cartoonish style and DLC. But the gameplay and control and rage on both parts is much easier for me to deal with. But the better thing about Borderlands over Rage, or Fallout, is that in Borderlands, there's a co-op mode for both local split screen or online multiplayer from up to four players. And the best way of playing Borderlands is multiplayer, no matter if it's local or online because the single player mode in Borderlands is not nearly as much fun as the multiplayer co-op. I still think the Fallout franchise are still my favorite Wasteland series out of all, but the only thing that the Fallout franchise doesn't have, which Rage and Borderlands does, is driving around in the Wasteland. That's the only weakness of the Fallout franchise, but other than that I like the Fallout franchise better. Also my other favorite Wasteland series is the actual Wasteland series itself, which the first one in Spirefall to begin with. Uh, okay, I think I'm getting over bored here, so let's get back to Rage. Now Rage also has a multiplayer mode, well, except that one's for online only. But I never did get into that part, because you know me, I'm not much of a multiplayer person. So I'm afraid I have to say that I have no notes on the multiplayer part. I do apologize for that. The story is quite decent. Precisely after getting out of the pod from the Ark, and after Dan Hager saves your ass from those bandits, he starts you up on your adventures. And you have to help out Dan, his townspeople, and the outrigger settlements in return, in order to gain trust and respect from each of them. And respect and trust is something you definitely need in order to advance further. So you're pretty much doing each other favors while you're hanging around in the town. Well, until the town gets nosy with these authority assholes hunting down an art survivor. And if I get made by the authority, that's not a good thing. So once that happens, Dan Hager suggests that I move on to another town, and he gets me associated with a head honcho of Wellspring. And Wellspring is much more of a bigger town, and the purpose of being in the town is first of all, you need to get a better armor of your choice to avoid being spotted by the authority. Now this is a one-time option, and each of the armor choices has special abilities, so it's better to choose wisely and choose the armor for your specialty. I choose the Wasteland armor, 
because I look like a local, and I get discount on purchases, except for weapon upgrades of course. You can also upgrade your armor too, so that's a good thing. Because things will get much more nastier out there. I think I already said that, didn't I? And like the previous town, it's all about gaining trust and respect by doing favors or jobs for them. Wellspring Town has more stuff to do, like more jobs, or racing to earn flags for upgrades for your vehicle, or mini games like card game, finger fillet, or gambling, or anything related to gambling, and all sorts of other stuff. But sooner than later, the authority will be poking around in the town of Wellspring, and everybody in Wellspring hates them. Later in the game, you will be acquainted with a faction called the Resistance, and you will learn much more about the authority and what they're capable of from them. Then you will be forced to leave the town of Wellspring. The Resistance guides you through to another wasteland area called the Eastern Wastelands, which is much more darker than the other wasteland area, and the town you get brought into is the Subway Town, and it's much more darker than Wellspring. But once again, like the other towns, it's all about earning trust and respect. And Subway Town has pretty much the same minigame goals like in Wellspring. But when you talk to townspeople in Subway Town, you'll learn even more about how dark and corrupt the authority can be. And once again, sooner than later, the authority is going to be snooping around Subway Town looking for you. Those damn authority idiots never give up, don't they? The weapons in Rage are pretty damn cool. And like I said before, each weapon has its own specialty. And one of my favorite projectiles I like using, especially for stealth attacks, is the Wean Sticks. They're like boomerangs, they're retractable, but they're called Wean Sticks. I don't like slicing the heads off of bandits or mutants or any other asshole that gets in my way. The worst villains in this game, of course, is the authority. In the real world and other fictional worlds, in somewhat ways, depending on what type of authority that exists. Some are fair, decent, and honest, but sometimes there are authority factions that are crooked bastards that think more about themselves, power, and what they think than what the people think. They make promises that turn out to be a big fucking lie, and use the false promises to cover up their evil deeds. For instance, the authority in Rage is a government that's totally worth giving a big shout out of saying, FUCK THE AUTHORITY, and giving the authority the ultimate middle finger while you're at it. Or maybe two for that matter. And the head asshole of the authority is General Cross. I haven't yet explained about the cons of the game. And there are a few of them. Like sometimes enemies can get overwhelming and shooting at them can be monotonous at times. And sometimes it can make you dizzy. Well, it made me dizzy. And the enemies can be too fast to get a proper aim. And some missions like side missions you have to go back to the same place for a different mission, and that can get really fucking tedious. But the worst part... Oh, wait a minute. Okay, before I continue, this will be a spoiler for sure. Because it's totally worth giving it away just in case if you get suckered in for wrong reasons. Because the worst part in Rage is the ending.
What the fuck? You gotta be fucking kidding me. What the fuck kind of ending is this? To be honest, I expect a better challenge, a much more epic battle, and a much more meaning of the end. The ending in my book makes no sense. Rage feels like a game with an incomplete ending. It's not a happy ending or a sad ending. It's just incomplete. And there's no other alternatives. Rage only has one ending, and it seems like it's unfinished. And you never get to see General Cross, the man behind this evil authority faction. And you can continue playing after the main story completion, but it doesn't affect on what the townspeople react. And after you supposedly shut down the authority headquarters, the authority members are still looking around the subway town. And the local citizens' reactions doesn't change. It feels like nothing happened. Yep, I would have to say that Rage was more incomplete on how they ended the game. I did have hopes on episodic DLC for Rage like they did for Fallout 3 after the main story. But sadly, that never did happen for Rage. But within almost a year from Rage's release, a $5 DLC called The Scorchers, which are a set of new missions that started out in the caves of Hager Settlement, and you're going against a new set of bandits called The Scorchers. And you meet this wasteland adventurous babe named Sarah, and she supports you through The Scorchers DLC. And you get a new weapon! And you can use that throughout the entire game if you do the missions early. The Nail Rivet Gun. Which is a pretty kick-ass weapon. And the Scorchers DLC is pretty interesting. But that doesn't make up for what type of ending the main story for Rage had. Overall, Rage is still an awesome new entry from the makers of Doom, Wolfenstein, and Quake. But like I said, the only thing that fucks it up the most is the lack of a real ending. I personally think Rage is better than Borderlands in my opinion, but not as superb as the Fallout franchise. And I hope in the future, id Software and Bethesda comes out with a superb sequel, and try to make up for what I call, unfinished ending. Rage is easy and cheap to come by nowadays for consoles, PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, and there's always sales on Steam all the time. And I would say if you don't mind the lack of a real ending, I would recommend Rage. Well, that's all I gotta say. This is Dixon of the Ultimate Gaming Room, logging off.